This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York, a city so nice, they named it twice. Let's start recording here and looking at, you're still all bundled up from last week. Well, it's still cold. <laughs> Actually, we do, we do two of these uh, 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 in, at one time. Right, and right. You, usually we should have you go out and change clothes just so it look. And I'll, I could change this thing, and we could. Yeah. What do you mean? I change hats usually. Yeah, but you didn't today. No, not today. Because you're freezing. No. You're freezing. No. Oh, I guess I could do this though. Oh, oh, okay. Well, now, uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our program. Our guest, and we were lucky to get him, the Unabomber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's your Unabomber outfit, right? Yeah. yeah. No, like this. Yeah. I never pull the hood up. You know. No. Maybe, maybe, if, maybe, maybe if it starts snowing heavy, I might put the hood up. Just right. You know. But, but I don't have a hood on. On. Do I have a? No, I don't have a hood on my jacket, which I have a Patagonia. I usually wear in this weather. What's that? It's just a. Uh, just a brand. You know. A good oh, it's like a down jacket? Uh, no, it, it's, I can't describe it. No, I don't know what's inside it, but it's an amazing jacket that I bought, gee, 10 years ago, and it's still just fine, okay? Okay. And uh, I, um, you know, took it to China with me, for instance, and wore it everywhere, and I, you can wear it in weather that's like, right today it's 50 degrees here or something like that. Well, it's, well, it's 41. But when it's like 50 degrees, six, uh, 55 degrees, I can wear it and be comfortable. Right. Or I can wear it at 35 degrees or 30 degrees, and it's still comfortable. Is that right? Yeah, it's an amazing jacket. I love it. Um, Marjorie bought it for me. And uh, I've, I've had it, uh, God, I've had it. We went to China with it, so that means it's about 12 years old, 13 years old. Is that right? Yeah, never wears out. The zipper's still good. And they guarantee it for life. Marjorie had the zipper go bad on hers after a while. So mm -hmm. she sent it back to them, and they replaced the uh, the zipper. And she sent it. Oh, is know, that right? And, and she had owned hers for like 15 years or something like that. Yeah. They're very good about it. It's a great brand. It's a great brand. And as a matter of fact, interesting, the company, we, we were talking the last time we did one of these about the way companies treat their people and how they fire right. them. They we're gonna let go of eight percent of our workforce and you know who those people are gonna be. It's not gonna be the people at the very top. It's gonna be the no. people at the bottom. Uh, which is stupid because you're gonna have to get rid of a hot a lot more of them to make up for the money loss than you right. are to fire people at the very top. But anyway, getting away from that, Patagonia I think did some kind of deal where they gave the company to their employees you know where are they, where are they what country are they out of I think they're I don't know I think Patagonia is an American company I could look it up here let's see here Patagonia oh where, where uh, okay where's no if I say where's Patagonia located they'll give me the country that Patagonia right. is in um, uh, uh, where is the company See, that would be good. Patagonia. Oops. Patagonia. <laughs> Located. Oh, it filled in the last part of it. Um, founded by Yvonne Chouniard in 1973. You, now, you would think with that name. His name is uh, Yvonne Chouni, uh, Chouinard. Chouinard. Okay. You would think what? Okay. What kind? What country would you think? Huh? Well, his first name's what? Uh, Yvonne. Y V O N. 
uh, Shuni Nard. Shuni Nard. Now, what what country would you say he probably is from? What what, what country would that make it? He's probably. Said, I'm trying to think where where a guy's I, name is Yvonne. Y- yeah, uh, I'd say I'd say maybe probably, maybe French. Maybe French or whatever. Well, it is based in uh, Ventura, California. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes. Operates stores in 10 countries globally, as well as factories in 16 countries, Patagonia Incorporated, Ventura, California, U.S. So. My jacket is made in America, okay? It's not made. Oh, you think so? No, that's what it, well, I, well, maybe they do send out to have it done. That could right. be. Right, you know, they have factories all over the world. Yes, I understand that. I understand that. Uh, remember when America used to be the producer of everything? Oh yeah. You know the cars were made here, and the clothes were made here, and the the uh, everything was made here, and then all of a sudden, I mean, what's more an American product than Apple, right? Where's the right. I, Where's the iPhone made? China. China. Where are the chips made? Taiwan. Right. Right. Americans aren't being employed to make those goddamn things, you know. So it's uh, we don't have American companies anymore. It's just and and, and any American company outsources because they can get it done cheaper in another country. They're cutting their own throats right. if they if they do it here. Plus, right. American workers are lazy. They really are, you know. And they don't. Uh, they don't. Uh, they, they they're going to try and build some of these things here, but I don't think they're going to do very good at it. It's just building a big chip company. To yeah, make. right. Aren't they trying to do that? Well, the reason we want to make the chips here is because Taiwan is politically in a very terrible zone. You know, it could right. be, could be attacked any day by China. Right. Right. And, and then. Right. And, and forget about it. We don't care about the Taiwanese. We care about our chips, you know, because those chips go into everything. Hell, I'm I'm surprised it's not in this bottle of soda, for crying out loud. Right, You know, right. We put chips in everything. And Taiwan makes most of the chips in the world. Something like 80% of all the chips are out of Taiwan or something like that. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're building a big chip facility here and what would like to replace what we get out of Taiwan from American made chips, not because it gives American jobs, God forbid, that, that should be your purpose, but because, you know, um, the, the, it, it's, uh, it's gonna make it uh, sure that we're gonna get them and uh, right. you know we're not gonna be able to make them cheaper here. American labor costs much more than labor in other right. countries. Plus, we don't mind. See, here's what we are, the morality of us as a people. We don't care where our chips are coming from, especially if they're, like, made by some 12-year-old boy in a sweatshop in China. Right. Right. We, we don't care about that. We just care that we get our chip. And that they work. And that they work. And that the phone works and so on. But you know, I just uh, I, I just think that uh, uh, you know, I mean, America, America has a, a terrible attitude when it comes to workers and what they're worth and who they are and who they should be and anything right. like that. You know, I, I just I, I find it immoral. You know, but that's me, Mister Radical Leftist. Oh yeah. You know, down with the corporations. Let's yeah. protest, Alex. Well, you know what? You know what bothers me. But here, here's a good example. People go, "Well, corporations are the lifeblood of this country." No, it's what's killing this country. I'll give you a perfect example. We talk about health care. We talk about right. health insurance. Do you know that prior to Reagan, the insurance companies couldn't make a profit? They were nonprofits. Is that right? Yes. And so that's why insurance was always so reasonable. All of a sudden, Reagan said, well, they're no longer, they no longer have to be nonprofits. And they became profit-making organizations. And now, look at the price of insurance. It's insane. 
It's insane. I mean, we pay. We pay. Well, I don't pay. The Marjorie's company pays up until next year. Uh, but uh, between the two of us, six hundred dollars a month for our insurance. We have Medicare, but we need the Medicare supplemental. Right. And so I have Medicaid. Yeah. I have Medicare and Medicaid. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Double down. Uh, well, no, like um, Medicare pays like eighty percent, and Medicaid picks up to twenty percent. Medicaid picks it up. Yep. Oh, so you and you are eligible for Medicaid, right? Well, you're in uh, you're in Massachusetts, right? Right. And they had a health they had a uh, insurance plan there that was set up oddly enough by Mitt Romney, right? That is uh, called Mass Care or something like that. Mass Health. Mass Health, and you can get insured under that if you want to, right? Right. Yeah. If I want to. Okay, but what? How do you how do you get Medicaid? I just applied for it. I'm not sure how I got it. Really? But you qualified for it because of your income, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So if you started oh, making... Lack of, oh, lack of income. Lack of income. If, if you, for instance, started making a lot of money, they probably wouldn't let you get that, that Medicaid, right? Right. Okay. Right, right. All right. Okay. I just, you know, that's that's good to know. Because, you know, in a year, Marjorie's not going to be paid by her company any longer, and I figure we, maybe we could go on one of those things. You know, we could get some kind of supple- right. some the kind of supplemental money, you know, crap right. like that. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, so, you know, um, I, I... Yeah, but you end up, there, Alex, when you're with Medicare and Medicaid, you end up in a lot of clinics. You only see a lot of private doctors. That's right. That's right. Well, I use, we get Medicare, of course, and then right. we, we get this supplemental, but it's the highest paid supplemental. We don't pay a penny. Okay, we right. leave a doctor's office. There's no copay, ever. I haven't seen a copay all year. What no. about, uh, what about um, uh, medication? Medication is a different thing. You have to go out and get your medication. Here's what I did with medication, right? and, and folks, take this as a hint, all right? There was, there was a pill I couldn't get because it was too expensive, and it, it was Cialis. It's a you know, boner pill, but it's also used to uh, allow you to pee easily um, right. as well, and that's what I took it for. But the price was extraordinary. It was like 125 bucks a month, right? And I had to get an okay for it, you know? And um, I went to my, I was talking to my urologist, and he says, well, let me give you a hint. Try this. And he wrote it on a piece of paper, and he said, Costco. I said, Costco? He said, yeah, go see what they charge for it. Right. Well, I went over there to Costco, and this pill that I was being charged with insurance, $125 a month for, was $15 a month. Is that right? So then, the same medication. So yes, well, it it, it was a you know it was the generic, but that's fine. But that's fine. I then looked at, and the generic was what was costing me one hundred and twenty-five a month with copay, you know, with the insurance taking care of part of it. So then I looked at all my pills and I started checking what I was paying with insurance and what I would not pay without insurance at Costco. And it was all cheaper. I was saved a, a, like hundreds of dollars a month going to Costco. Uh, so what you do is you go to Costco and try and get what they carry. I mean, sometimes they don't carry something you're done that might be more exotic that your doctor prescribes. Then you use your right. insurance. But I haven't used my insurance in a year. And I tell Costco, no, I don't want you to, to do it on my insurance because if you do it on my insurance, then at the beginning of the year, there'll be like a, a minimum that you, you know you got to make five hundred pay five hundred bucks right. first before you get the the, the the break in price. And I said I don't need that, so just don't. I don't have insurance, so I'm without. I'm I'm getting all my drugs from Costco without insurance. So you might try Costco. I don't know of a Costco around here. You don't need to Costco online. Do you have a Costco card? I lost it. Oh, you might need you need a Costco card. Well, couldn't they look it up? But you don't have to go to a Costco. 
although you can, they do have drug, you know, drug right. prescription drug dispensing at Costco's, but I get mine by mail order. And it's perfect. It's wonderful. It's terrific. Oh, well, you have to send in a prescription? Yeah, a doctor sends a prescription to them, and then you start getting it every month. You know, so... I mean that's my hint to everybody. Don't waste your mo don't waste your money um, going to your local drugstore and paying, you know, the insurance. Because when it started coming out in the beginning of the year, where I had to like pay out about four or five hundred dollars first before I started getting the right. break in price, I went, "This is bogus," you know. Right. And I've saved a lot of money over that by going to Costco. So I mean, I'm telling you. A hundred and twenty-five dollars versus fifteen. Okay. Right. And there are other drugs yeah. that I take that are very expensive, and that when I get them at Costco, they're much cheaper, much cheaper. So I suggest that. Now, the only downside with Costco is, as I say, I can go into my Walgreens with my insurance, and and say, look, I need this particular drug my doctor ordered up, and it's an exotic drug. Let's say it's a right. ca it's a cancer drug or it's a something drug, and they don't like you know the they don't like to pay for them, but they have to. Then you can get it there, but you if you go to Costco, they might not even carry it. Right, so, I got gotcha. you. But I I've never had that situation yet where I had to go to them go to my Walgreens to get the drug. The only time I get a drug at Walgreens, let's say I go to a doctor, he says, you've got an infection, here's a script for you know, antibiotics. Uh, right. I will go to Walgreens because I need them now. Right. You know, I don't need them later. And the Walgreens is right down the street where Costco is all on the other side of town. So if I wanted to get it at the pharmacy there. So, right. you know, but I've never had that problem yet, so. Except when I got, what was it, Paxlovid, you know, for the, the thing you should take if you come down with uh, with the COVID because it right. re really mitigates it. And I had to get yeah, it. Yeah, but you've had all your boosters, haven't you? Yeah, but that doesn't mean you still don't get COVID, you know. So, I mean, I got COVID. Uh, I, I tested positive for COVID. I didn't feel anything. Marjorie right. got it a little worse. But I I needed the Paxlovid and I needed it now. I didn't. I can't wait. You know, ten days for right. him to mail it from Costco. So that's what I did. You know. So then I, then I used the local pharmacy. But that's what I do for my pharmaceuticals. What do you do for your pharmaceutical pharmaceuticals? I go to CVS. You go to CVS. Why? And and uh, do you have insurance? Yes. What through CVS? No, through uh, Medicare and Medicaid. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, and Medicaid, well, Medicaid probably does take care of, uh, like Medicare does not take care of. No, you have to have Part D yeah, with yeah. Medicare. Part yeah. D is yeah. uh, prescription drugs. Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't know any of this. I leave this all up to my wife to figure out. She's the, oh, you're a lucky she, man. She's the bookkeeper in the house, you know. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I I assume she is an embezzling from me. You know, so. You never know. You never know, you know. She acts nice. She acts <laughs> nice. But she could be robbing me blind for all I know because I trust her instincts when it comes to bookkeeping, you know. Right. You know. And I, I said to her one day, what's two and two? And she said five. You know, so she's very good at it. She comes up for the numbers <laughs> immediately. But um, so and, and on a snowy day like today, is there snow, right. is snow sticking on the ground? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's you're, snow on the ground right now. As my mother used to say, we're up to our pupic in snow. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, we got hit pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, therefore, you just don't go out, right? Well, I had to go out and shovel. Yeah. Yeah. But you're in a you're in a fairly large house. Is it a large house or? Yes. Okay. How large? Do you know? No, I don't know the square foot. Yeah, that's really been a good deal for you. you yes. Know? You know, and you get along with your roommate. Yes, I do. Yeah, old ex girlfriend. I found that out. Ex, ex girlfriend. Yeah, that that 
Gee, I'm wondering. I, can, I guess I could do it with some of my gr- ex-girlfriends. Yeah. Well, we were, we were pretty much common law. Because you Common look- law. We, we were together that long. Yeah. Well, wait, wait, wait. she was. I, I met her in high school. We dated all through college, all, and she moved out to San Francisco with me. She was in Paris with me. She was in Paris with me. Wow. For, for the time I was there, so we've known each other for a long time. Well, he was in Paris because you were miming it up, right? I was studying. Yeah. Can you? Can I you, wasn't. Well, I wasn't doing mime. Can you? Can you get out of? Can you be in the glass box for me right now? Wait a minute, wait a minute, like this. And then uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that. But so she went to Paris for that. So through all that, then why didn't you just stay together? I guess after uh, all of that, you were sick and tired of each other? Is that what No, happened? no, 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 no. I was doing stand-up, and I was drinking and drugging a lot, and she wanted to go to nursing school. Okay. And now it was her time to go to school. Yeah. So I was just, I was out of control. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I imagine you've since apologized for that behavior, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Many times. It's amazing. Our life is dictated by all the people we had to apologize to. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's true. So so how is your relationship now? It's, it's, apparently it's good. You're living in the It's same. great. It's, it's really good. She invited you to come to your place. Are some of the old feelings coming to the surface again? No. 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 Does she date? No. Oh, okay. And you don't date either? No. So basically, all you've got is each other. Pretty much. So that's back to the way it was. Yeah, except we sleep in separate rooms. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know a lot of couples that do that because, in fact, I'm think, I, sometimes I go into my, the guest room to sleep because Marjorie is snoring too loudly. Is that right? Yeah. It's always good. If you're married, it's always good to have another room where you can just go off and you got your own little domain and she's got her own domain. Right. Because then, like in this apartment, we don't get sick of each other. There's too much space in here. Right. You know? She can be in the living room doing something, and I can be in the office, and we're like uh, half a block away from each other. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, a pretty good walk. So How many square feet is your apartment? 2,500. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, wow is right. Then ask me how much I'm, a, ask me how much we're, we're paying in rent. Oh, I know you're paying like nothing. Five hundred dollars and seven cents a month. Now we folks, just so you know, that didn't happen because that was the rent. That was the rent as dictated by a judge after we spent uh, almost one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars to get this apartment. So you know. With lawyer right. fees and everything else, yeah, but that was terrific enough, you know. So, so do I. Uh, do I look healthy? Yes. Oh, Why okay. do you feel healthy? Yeah, I just, I just, I, when I look at myself here in the picture, I see I've stopped wearing a hat, uh, and uh, I just. Yeah. Why is that? Because Marjorie cuts my hair, and it, it, you know, it looks fine, you know. Right. Uh, I need another one now, but you know. But anyway, I just I, I I'm glad you say I look healthy. Okay, fine. Because yeah, I, 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 I'm asking people questions like this lately. I just had my best friend die on me. Right. You know. Right. And, I saw that. And I get I get just I, I'm just really paranoid about all of this. You know, am I looking good? Am I sick? You know, whatever. Because what happened to him was kind of out of a clear blue sky, and you just don't know whether you've got something or there's some condition. I mean, you. Why? What happened? What happened to him? Uh, it's it's complications from a little problem he had. Uh, no, it's not a social disease, folks. Well, he he did a little bit of drinking in his lifetime, and he had right. he had cirrhosis, and I think it was complications from cirrhosis. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, so it was very sudden. He's 67, very sudden, unexpected. And so I look at myself here and go, any signs that I look terrible? Uh, you know, that I'm going. Because he wasn't looking he was too just being paranoid. Yeah, I know. He wasn't looking too good before, you know, the incident. No, he had cirrhosis of the liver. Yeah. You're yeah. not a drinker. Yeah, no, but God, if I get cirrhosis, you better go find a researcher who can do something to figure out why. Right, you know, right. I, and uh, unless, you know, there are a lot of other things that can affect your liver. But I just looked, and our time is running out. Thank you so much, Steve Kravitz. It's always a pleasure doing business. I can't believe how fast the time goes. It just zooms right by. Well, that's because you're fun to talk to, and I'm a delight. Anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye. This is Gabnet. The Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. And hello, how are you? I'm sorry, we're about, a, about five minutes late kind of getting the show really on. Uh, I had all kinds of problems. I, I, I did something here. I, I, I completely stopped my, uh, uh, my uh, what do you call it, my computer thing, my browser computer thing. Boy, am I a technical guy now? Uh, my my browser, and uh, so I wanted to start up the browser, and I started up the browser, and then it went to go look for something or another, and then it stalled the video, and it got really bad. So I uh, I just stopped the show and started all over again. So for you people who are listening to me live and are watching this as the uh, offshoot of the live program tomorrow. Uh, if you see a bunch of stuff happening, I'm sorry. You saw it all screw up, okay? And by the time you get to it tomorrow, probably if you get to it late in the day, uh, I will have corrected it. But, uh, you know, the live version is fine. The live version is fine. Anyway, want to say hello to all of you. We only have a couple of people waiting. Hmm. Typical Thursday. Typical Thursday. Always this way on Thursday. Hold on a second. Let me just go look at something here there we go let me start that up there we go i just wanted to see if we were doing okay and we're out there we're doing it you know it's uh it's uh, it, it gets more difficult for me all the time it gets a little more pressure burden on me pressure burden is that a term well it is now anyway let me invite some people in here uh, uh and these are our people who are waiting there's Kevin, and here comes Brian Neary, uh, two of the brightest people that we have on our panels. So, we, are, do you like that? What do you, what do you, oh, you, you're putting. You said brightest. brightest. Yeah, I know, so. I know. You are one of the brightest people on our panel. Yes, you there too, you too, Kevin. We're two Kevin. of the brightest. Boy. Well, I'm dull, so, you know. <laughs> there you go. I'm not one of the brightest people on this uh in this group it kind of looks nice it's a nice uh kind of casual like i'm i'm doing the show in the dark right and then i oh here i am yeah anyway how are you guys doing tonight good yeah you look great by the way i look great yeah what do you mean i look great i mean you look great you look good. I look. Are you saying that because you heard me talking to to uh, Kravitz about my health and do I look okay? Yeah, I just think you should hear that every once in a while. Well, yeah, it helps. It helps. You know, every time I got a new camera, I got this new 4K camera, which I don't know. I'm having troubles with it because <laughs> it has a steady shot, but it doesn't seem to really do it that well. And my hand, I have a kind of arthritis in this hand now. So when I hold the camera, I'm kind of shaking it a little bit. And it should make up for the shaking, the steady shot, and it doesn't. So every time I'm shooting with video, I got it, you know, so I don't know. I got it. So can we talk about that? Because I want to get one like you got. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that one's, what, is that a Sony? It's a Sony. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Ah, DX, whatever it is. DX. DX. I don't know. Maybe we should get Phil on here. Uh, it's, oh, called no, the, uh, uh, it, it's called the. It's called the ZV. Oh, here it is. The uh, uh, ZVE10. 
Oh. See, it says ah, so, right one. on the back it says wow. that. See, he, he, ah. he, well, I can't, yeah, focus. But it, you but. said you bought it at the, at the, what do you call it? B&H. Yeah, but what is that? B&H is, is a big bunch of uh, Jewish Hasidim in <laughs> New York City. And it's a big, you know, it's like this, t it, they have cameras of every sort. You want to buy everything from this camera for a thousand dollars up to a, you know, hundred thousand dollar motion picture quality camera. You can buy it at B and H. Okay. It sounds like a big, big store. Oh, but huge, huge. Really? Can't drill them down. What? You can't drill them down though. What, you can't drill yeah, them down. You no, you discount? can't drill them down. Right. No. <laughs> it's already all Jewed down. It's already it's pre Jewed. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. no, well, actually, actually, I got to tell you, you know, the Hasidim are really difficult people. If you if and I say that as a Jew, have you ever met up with any of them, uh, Alan, out there on the West Coast? Yeah. So, so you know what I'm saying, right? Yes. OK, yeah. they're difficult. Uh, and uh, they it, they don't exactly like Jews like Alan and I because, or even <laughs> Jeff. Right. Jeff, you know, the Hasidim, right. Would they like you? Would they think you were a good Jew? No. no, they wouldn't think you were a good Jew at all. None of us are. Why? Because, uh, <clears throat> you know, you don't make your wife wear a wig, you know. <laughs> it's like, but anyway, but I got to tell you, every time I've ever gone to B&H to buy something, it's the most pleasant experience I've ever had. Is it only one place or is there there's a bunch of them around? No, that's it. I think that's the main one. And then you can buy online. Ah. Okay. <laughs> So the camera, the camera. Well, it's like that thing. place. Uh, what, what, what that? What's that place in San Jose up there on Campbell and um, Hamilton? Yeah, okay. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That, that you, camera, what is it called? Yeah, San Jose Camera. You know what? There was a shooting there about a month ago. Adrian and I just drove by just after the shooting happened. Someone oh, really? Went in, yeah, went in there and tried to rob them, and as they ran out. Someone behind the counter pulled out a gun and started shooting them. <laughs> well, you know something. I got to tell, tell you something. Uh, 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 you guys all know this in the Bay Area, but there was a place called Fries. Oh yeah. And Fries oh, yeah. was like the just the heaven of technology. Okay? Oh yeah. It was this store. It was huge. It was formerly a supermarket and a supermarket chain. And one day they decided the hostess Twinkies weren't selling too well, so they'd sell chips and But they're still around computers. in uh, Arizona. The, the grocery part's still around in Arizona. The, the grocery yeah. part is still around. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, they started these stores, which were mammoth. And you could go in there, and it was like heaven for anybody who was into computers. Oh, yeah, they had cafeterias and everything in the middle, cafes in oh, the yeah, middle. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, I used to go to the one down in San Jose, not San Jose, but uh, b b b just north of San Jose. I'm trying to remember the location. Santa Clara. Santa Clara. Yeah. That one didn't have a place to eat inside. But yeah. anyway, it was this B&H is like that. I mean, you go into B&H, and if you're into cameras and you're into video, Man, uh -huh. you're just going to go around the store jerking off. They're going to arrest you for the way you're <laughs> acting, you know? I mean, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Yeah. The camera that I'm on right now is from B&H. Phil recommended them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Logitech camera. Well, he happens to like this a company called, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, 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 oh, boy, it starts with an A. Um, I don't know. And, it, 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 and they're in, here, down here off of 6th Avenue. And he buys from them, and I don't like them that much. I, I've been to them. They just didn't. Then that B B and H just it, the people who work there are just wonderful, you know. And they know what they're talking about too. They, it's not like you're talking to a dummy when you're buying this stuff. So, I mean, I'm not trying to do a commercial for them. I paid full price, okay? So you know. <laughs> but, it is a nice store. My brother bought me a stereo receiver there. Yeah. Well, I, uh, oh, yeah, you can get that, you know. He yeah. Bought a, yeah, he surprised me with it. I never I never went in until he took me in there and they had everything. I didn't really, you know, I knew what I wanted. I think so. it fries, if I remember correctly, it fries in, in California. It, when you checked out, like you just bought a computer, you checked out, you could buy like candy bars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You had to walk through the aisles of them. Yeah. Overpriced candy. Oh, yeah, they did have a whole thing of candy and so on. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. 
But I uh, used to go down there just on a on on a whim and just walk through the place and walk out of the place having spent well, thousands of dollars. You know, well, I can see you buying a new computer like every three months. Well, that's back about in what the I, every three aisles. What do you mean every three months? Would you upgrade your computer right away, like back in the day when they would come out? Like, I got to get the newer one, the faster one. I can see that. Well, I, you know, I always waited a couple of years, I think, you know, right. between buys of that sort. But, you know. You could go in there with a shopping cart and <laughs> walk up and down the aisles and just pick parts out and build a computer in that place that, and walk yep, out. Absolutely. Yep, 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 absolutely. Yep, yep. But that, that was wonderful. You know, it was really wonderful, that store. And they went out of business, and I just, I sat Shiva here for a week. You know, uh, but the guy that we used to do my did my gardening for a while used to work for Mr. Fry. Oh, really? Oh, right. really? Really? Um, the guy that owned it anyway. Yeah. The Fry's continue to own it throughout its entire existence or did they sell it off? Uh, uh, I believe they owned it the whole time and still own the stuff in Arizona. Yeah. But that's a supermarket, right? He said. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a rich mo. He's a rich mofo. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, the, the fries that was in Fremont a mile from where I live was huge. I can't yeah. believe they went out of business. Okay. I can't either. Yeah. I think they just got too big for their britches. And there, there, were, there were so many stores, and they were like literally Home Depots for electronics. Yeah. They were just huge. Oh, oh no, absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, they were they were amazing. Oh, the, and the every, fries, every, fry, every, yeah, every fries had a, uh, a theme. Uh, yeah, Maya. Yeah. Pyramid. Pyramid. Pyramid, yeah. Pyramid, yeah. Pyramids and, uh, and the whole inside they would do like that. It would be like a whole Aztec yeah. theme. Yeah. And then you go to exactly. another one and it was a Western theme. And then you go to another one, you know, and it was something else. And uh, the, the one in Fremont in the center of it, they had a glass enclosed caged Tesla coil in there and it looked like it was it was a really powerful one. And it was, they called it their lightning maker. And it went on every like 15 minutes. And you could hear it throughout the whole store. Now they yeah. bought up, they bought up what was the biggest tech store anywhere, which was up in Sacramento. And I think it was called World of Wonder or something like that. Uh -huh. And it was amazing. I mean, it made, it made fries look like nothing. Really, uh -huh. that's how big it was. And fries ultimately bought them. No, Th that may have been what put them out of business was buying that place. You know, just just stocking the shelves had to cost, you know, half a million billion dollars or something. You know, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Um, Isn't there a place called Forty Seventh Street or something? Forty like Seventh Street Photo. That was some more yids. Yeah, yeah, that was some more Hasidim. Uh, but they weren't as good as the B and H Hasidim. So I I think I think Forty Seventh Street. Photo is probably still there, but I remember buying camera equipment from them yeah. years ago. Yeah, when I first lived in New York. Uh, so you know these these, but yes, uh, yes. Uh, but but uh, what's yeah. what's the difference you see between your 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 new camcorder thingy and your uh, and your GoPro? Because you have a GoPro Ten, right? Well, yeah. This is, and it's it's become a, a kind of a vexing problem for me. I have a certain amount of regret in buying this, only because <laughs> there are no, there are so many bells and whistles that uh. I can adjust. You know, I can go automatic, but that's not very good. You know, mm -hmm. you you want to. I could, but this you could, this is like a camera. You can turn everything on and off with a GoPro. You pretty much there's not much you can do with it. It even know, looks right? like a camera. In your oh, it is a camera. It's a cam. It, it's like all the new cameras are also video cameras as well. Right. You buy a Canon, it's a video camera. You, you buy, buy a, a Sony, it's video. it's video camera. You buy a Nikon, it's a video camera. But yeah. then it's this is also a still camera as well. And I took a still today of Marjorie, and I could see every wrinkle in her face. And I took a picture of her, and I sent it to her, and she said, don't ever take a picture of me with that camera again. <laughs> I said, well, it's not the camera's fault, okay? Actually, <laughs> you know? your iPhone 13 probably could do just about as good. Yeah, the I, I mean, the, the iPhone, I would say, if I had to say what was my most usable uh, um video cameras that I own, uh, this this would be, have the most quality. This would be the most quality. The second most quality, 
and almost equal to that, although it doesn't have the bells and whistles. In other words, I, I can zoom in, but it's rough to do. You have to do it with point, you know, squeezing and stuff. And it just isn't as flexible as this one is, uh, but it's the iPhone. And then third comes the GoPro. And the GoPro is terrific, but it doesn't have, you can't do much, you can't zoom in with the GoPro, you know. You really can't do things like that. It's not. Right. So if I went on a vacation, I would carry all three. But to carry all three, I can carry them in my pocket for crying out loud. All three. You know. But I would I take all like, three and then what? I used to like taking my old gimbal. And I no nobody has them anymore. But I used really? to like to take these on vacation because it looks like a gun. <laughs> it looks like a gun. Yeah. <laughs> Right. It looks like you're about ready to rub somebody out with a Tommy gun or something. You you have a gimbal in there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking about maybe buying a gimbal for this thing and then it won't shake as much. You know. Mm. Uh gimbals are in case people don't know what we're talking about, a gimbal is a thing that you put the camera in or on or attach it to that keeps it level at all times. You know. Huh. I have an old one for the GoPro here, cost me three hundred bucks. You don't even need them anymore for the GoPro. You can know. take it. You can take a GoPro and turn it upside down, and it won't change. Yeah. You know, it'll just level with the horizon. So yeah. I mean, uh, it, each one $6 has its own usage. So I doesn't move. What? Six dollars on Amazon, and it holds my iPhone. If you set it down like a tripod, it doesn't move. Yeah, right. Well, I I was thinking of getting. And then that. you can you can you can tell Surrey Surrey take a picture. Snap. I'd show you my other cameras, but I would have to move to take this down, and then you'd see the mess in back of me. So, you know. Uh, so, Wayne, are you into technology at all? Oh, a little bit. Yeah. 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 A, a standing joke I say is, uh, not you know, not really. I even took the batteries out of my TV remote. <laughs> and, and when people ask you why, I say, oh, I'm afraid it may start a fire. <laughs> you know something when the i i got uh i got this i bought this thing over at B H, but then i bought a lens for it and what hmm. else did i buy i bought oh i know what i bought i bought some little button batteries right for the holder so that i have them standing hmm. by right they come it's in a big box it's uh, let me show you let me show hmm. you the actual item okay because you got to see this you're gonna go, what? How did that happen? Wait a minute, now where is it? Oh, got it. No, I was going in here and I was looking around and, oh, here we go. There we go. See? Don't fall. This, okay? Yeah. It came in a fairly large box in which this was just floating around on the bottom oh, of it. Yeah. And it came with a box that had on it, danger, lithium ion batteries. They can't, somehow they have to ship them in a box that says "danger uh, lithium ion batteries." Yep. Yeah, they can't yeah. go by air. Yeah they, yeah, they can't go by air. And nope. I don't know why. You know, with all the science that we have, they don't invent a new lithium ion battery that doesn't blow up or catch fire. <laughs> but they are. They all. They do. They have the potential. And if you come on an, air, I don't know what happens if I go on an airplane with my with my cameras. Am I, do I have to store them away? <clears throat> no, carry that's what's funny. Carry on. Yeah. They let you carry them on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just as long as you sit on them, so if they blow up, your nads get hurt. <laughs> yeah, okay. right. Yeah. But geez, Almighty, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you've heard about some terrible fires as a result of lithium ion. What did I yep. hear here in New York? They've been having them, you know, in the subways. But we're still working when those regulations anyway, came out. We had to get trained on how to ship an, a, an ion, a lithium battery. Uh, so here it is, what, uh, Thursday. And um, two things haven't happened. Number one, the district attorney here in New York has not yet charged Donald Trump. Uh -huh. And I have yet to get a call from my doctor. So <laughs> what do you think is going to happen first? Can we put some odds on oh, this? Oh, I'd say Trump's going to get arrested. Yeah. Yeah, for the, mm -hmm. absolutely. I'm not going to hear from that doctor. I'm sure of it now. Tomorrow, tomorrow it'll be a month. 
Oh yeah, he's not. I one. I do all my blood work, and then Kaiser sends me an email saying all your stuff's here. I go on there and I look, and it says you're supposed to be between this and this, and I'm this. Okay, I'm safe. I go to the next one. I go to the next one. I go to the next one. I don't hear from him. Right, but mine isn't being put up anywhere. You know, when mm -hmm. I go to when I have it done at Mount Sinai, everything mm -hmm. is up there. I can go see it. This right. this this outfit doesn't have a place you can go and look at it. Wow. Plus, you know, don't you think he would have called me if there was something really yeah. serious there? Sure. Of course. If there's something wrong, he's going to call you. Yeah, and but like, no, isn't it? Wouldn't it be nice time. if knowing that people are, when they have blood tests and they're my age, you're kind of a little concerned, you know, about how it's going to turn out. And it would be oh, nice. So it would be nice if he called, especially. The doctor at, should know you, is, Alex Bennett. He should know you, right? So he should know he should call you. No, you no, know, he doesn't know me from Adam. You know, I'm, I'm, I was thinking I, last night if he uh, if he ever does call, you should just have Marjorie answer and just say, uh, "No, he passed away last yeah, week from a blood disease. from a blood disease." Right? He was so right. worried about you. He never called. Right. And by the way, my lawyer will be calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the last the end of the call. By yeah, the way. yeah. No, but I, you know, I mean, maybe he'll call me tomorrow, but that'd be a month. You know, yeah, I mean, call. I don't think I'm going to hear from him. Uh, yeah. Um, Usually they don't even work on Fridays. A lot of doctors, some of them are regular doctors. Well, I mean, if they're, you know, they go home early if they're years. My brother went to the heart yeah. doctor today in the city, and he doesn't work on Fridays. He took him today on Thursdays. Now he's he's not in the office Friday. Well, a lot of doctors, you know, Jewish doctors yeah. sometimes yeah, will take, take Friday off. off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's not Come Friday yet. Well, it's not Friday yet. But yeah. anyway, the point is that, that that this guy should have called me. After all, he billed. Medicare over five thousand dollars for less than an hour that I spent with him. Wow. Now Medicare wasn't going to send him five thousand dollars. They sent him they sent him uh nine hundred and then my other insurance sent him the other hundred and ninety, I think it was. Uh and he's already got it in his bank account right now. And he's yet to call. Yeah. You know. He's counting the money. Yeah, he's counting the money. It's right. like, what's that show? He charged me. He charged me five hundred dollars for an intake fee for a first time for a first time wow. visit. Wow. That's well, a wait a minute. Let me ask you this: yeah. Is there a way I can bypass the first time visit by doing a second time visit? You know, I mean, what time. what is this first time visit? I've got to go see you to have you look yeah, yeah. at me. That's just the way to charge you for extra money, really. Yeah, I mean, this guy. I mean, I think that this was a real rip, and I'm I'm going to and I'm waiting a month, and then I'm going to write a review which I can put up on his site. Oh, you could do that, yeah. And I I'm going to say, by do not see this doctor or anyone <laughs> at this place, and then I'll start with me being stuck three times before they could find a vein. Oh yeah, you have at a vein. place who's who out. in their name is the word blood, so you would think this was a specialty with them, you know, that the least they could do is get the blood out to be able to look at it. I felt after a while they're in so much trouble they were going to ship me off to the lab and just have them do the whole process. But it turns out, no, but it turns out he does most of the processes at his office. Really? Okay. Yes. Yes. So most of the blood tests were done there, and they were over with by the end of business day that day. So he could have called me Monday. Yeah. You know, I figured, oh, maybe some of these blood tests took a couple of weeks to come through. No. No. My doctor says they usually take two or three days tops when I go to regular MD. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, he says, right. We, they send it out. He goes. Well, it was, it was wonderful. I feel I feel just uh, terrific that uh, I'm sure he would have called me if there was anything yeah. really bad. But I know that I do have low platelets, and we should do something about that. And he should call me about that and just say, "Come on in. I'll give you a B12 shot, and we'll see what happens." You know. You know how low they are. Hmm? Are you on vitamins, Alex? I've or? had low plate. That's a part of my life, and my doctor changed. To a different platelet test, and my platelets are normal. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. Well, mine this time were like about I don't know seventy nine or something. They had been a hundred and nine. Yeah. When they get down to about. Well, they when I they know, get down past fifty. 
50. That, you know, it, 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 hey, I, I, if I stick myself and I bleed, it coagulates, okay? So it's, it's oh, how bad yeah. is my platelet count? But anyway, I just, you know, I just, this whole thing just really bothered me. It has bothered me because I, I just don't think it's right, you know? And and this guy was recommended by my neurologist. I called my, I got a hold of my urologist who I trust. And said, do you know this guy? What do you think of him? He says, I have several patients who go to him. They say he's a good guy. I say, okay, fine. Okay, he's got a good recommendation. But I think neither of these guys have had to have an experience with him, you know. And then he comes in to, to check me out. And I should have known there was something wrong because, you know, doctors wear white coats. And they only wear white coats for one reason, to make you feel they're official, right? They don't need the white coat. In fact, why get the white coat? Because if you're dealing with blood, you get blood all over your white coat, you know? But, but he didn't wear a white coat. He just walked in with a suit, oh, wow. you know, checked me under here found a, 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 a enlarged lymph no. node in my groin, which could be from anything, you know? And then he said, I'll, uh, we're drawing all the blood, we're doing all the blood tests, I'll be in touch. Bye. Fastest time I ever spent in a doctor's office. How okay. was it in and out, Alex? Sometimes it's like really quick. Huh? It, Sometimes it's like- Well, they had it listed way there. more than a visit. They said it was from 45 to, to 55 minutes was the, for the intake, okay? So, uh, you know, it just, it was, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> just ridiculous. But anyway, so that's another thing for me to gripe about. You know, I'm an old man. I have to have things to gripe about. Otherwise, that's you... That's what Shecky, Alex Other... Shecky used to say that. He goes, when what? I used to leave, and you used to call, he goes, no, I'm getting rid of you, and I got to get him on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be like, that. Well, he's got some kind of ailment. <laughs> Yeah. All right, good night, Tony. Yeah, well, I'll thank you for ma thank good. you for making me feel that my friend hated me. Yeah, okay. really. Oh, he, was, li he, li he was laughing. He was making jokes. Yeah, he was yeah. making. Uh, yeah. No, he come on. He was joking about it. He was funny when he used to do that. Well, he only did it once because you told me the story before. Oh, I'm sorry. And it only happened once, right? Yeah. No. You know? he, no so he, when you're making it sound like every time you were over there, he said, "Oh, Alex, no, you know." Yeah. You did say every time I'm over there, when I get ready to he, leave. Yeah. Well, that one time he called, I was getting ready to leave. Yeah. Yeah, you should hear what he used to say about you. But we won't. We many times, many times. You know, he, he would send me your emails. They were so I laughable. I was a pain in the neck. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I miss the guy. I miss his movie talks when he. You know, I, I, the I, one I thing I don't think out. he died, but I don't think the one thing he's not going to miss is you. Okay, uh, so <laughs> I don't blame. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what was it saying, Charlie Shirt? Have I seen that one before? Oh, yeah, that was today. May the 4th be with you. Oh. Well, but it isn't May the 4th yet. May the 4th. Oh, that's Star Wars. That's, the, that's the physics formula for 4th. Four yeah, but, but it's not. But, but I thought you would be wearing it today because it was May the 4th, but it's not May the 4th. No, it's oh, not. Well, I thought you were talking about like when you cast gas. Yeah. Here's what I don't get, okay? Forget about this, okay? Um, but Shecky only said that once, right? Yeah, come on. Yeah. He was joking. He used to always joke with me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he, I always did tell him about my health, and he used to tell yeah. me. Yeah, I would have to drag out of him anything. how his health was. I mean, he wouldn't tell me, you know. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. We're... Anyway, uh, here, here's another thing. I go out. If, to begin with, my wife is a real con artist, okay? What so we go that? for a walk yesterday, and it's amazing how hard it is for me to walk lately because I just haven't been out that much, you know? You really lose that ability, you know? So we crawled our way over to the park and did another one of our spectacular park uh, uh, videos, which everybody seems to love to the tune of, like, more v yeah. views than anything I do, Okay. And before we're going over there to the park, she says, well, you, listen, you, you're a little weak. Maybe it's because you didn't have anything to eat today. Let's, why don't we stop? I'll buy you lunch, okay? And I said, well, let's get it on the way back. All right. So we, we go to the park, we do our thing, come back, we're passing the, the place. We walk in and I, we sit down, we buy our food, we eat, and, I, and the bill comes and I said, okay, so here, here's the bill. 
because remember she said to me, "Oh, she's treating you." I'll I'll I'll, I'll pick up the tab if you want to get some lunch now, and I said, uh, uh, "She says no, you pay for it," and I went, "Wait a minute, weren't you going to pay for it?" And she said, "Well, that was on the way over." <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd been videotaping this. This would have been a, made a great video. And I said, "Okay, I'll take care of it." But exactly. who's awesome. taking care of our dinner next Tuesday for our wedding anniversary? And she said, "You are." And I said, "Now wait a minute. Why is it the guy always has to pick up the check? You know, you have as much money as I do." Well, she doesn't. Well, yes, she does. If you include the apartment she owns, she's got more money than I do. And I said to her, I said, uh, uh, "Why is it I always have to pick it up? Why can't you pick up our 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 dinner at uh, for our anniversary?" She says, "Because you're the guy." <laughs> Which made me think it's very expensive to be a guy and date, <laughs> because you are always expected to pick up the check, right? I mean, even if the woman is like 100% women's liberation and Me Too and all of that, that stuff, it's still like, well, here's the check. Take care of it. <laughs> you know? So I wish I was born a woman. Then I could get people to take me out to dinner. You wouldn't have had your prostate. Well, well, I wouldn't have had a prostate problem. That's for damn sure. That's right. You know, I could have gotten breast cancer, though. That's always oh, possible. Yeah, that's that's you know. Or or what what's the other thing uh, ovarian oh, cancer that's a that's another one you could get. Yeah. Why is it that we have a lot of problems with our sexual business, both men and women? God do it. You know well, why? Because we overuse it. Is that the the deal here? You know. Hey, one thing it's a big business though. When I that that prostrate stuff, the guy got patients going in and out. That's a money maker. Yeah, but did you notice how old they were? I know. Well, oh, I, I went into. Like I had this I was one guy. He was age, he yeah. was terrible, but he did like a a volume business. You know. Yeah, it's like, I yeah. Don't believe I mean, I I noticed business. he had six fingers because he grew an extra one <laughs> just because we had so many patients. You I know. Got some rack to go. <laughs> but anyway, he um, I I used to go there and we would sit there and it's it was packed. Place was packed. Yeah. And I looked at Marjorie and I went. See any young people in here? And she said, no. Because most of the people who get prostate problems or urology, u urology problems are all over the age of, of 60. Yep. Close to 80, you know. The ones that are younger than 60 usually die young because of it. Oh, oh I'm sorry, uh, Tony. Oh, yeah. And I get people who are overweight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm a lot more than a little overweight, Tony. I'm only joking with you. You got to get that fixed there. Well, I, w I wish he would lose weight because, you know, I, I have trouble yeah. getting people calling the show now. If he drops dead on me, I've, I've got one less person. Okay. I mean, I, ha I have one less person on, uh, what is it, on, on Mondays. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. So, I mean, a regular, somebody who called every single every week. week. Yeah. So, anyway, that's that. Ah. But yeah, on my tombstone, it's going to say, see, I told you I was sick. Right next to your ashes, huh? Right. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if I want it. I don't know what Marjorie I want. Marjorie will have to pay for that. I don't know. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, she will. Uh, yeah, no, she'll probably put the bill in my coffin. You know? <laughs> or in the urn after she gets the ashes back. You know. it in there like a dollar and what do you bill. do with those ashes? You know, uh, for a while, I, if I remember correctly, she used to still have her mother's ashes here, and I don't know what she did with them, but I think they were here at one time. You know, what did you, what did you do with your, did your mother was your mother cremated or buried? Who mine? Your mother. Oh. Uh, 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 the only person here who has a mother is Tony. <laughs> Yeah, oh. Tony. Oh, she's in she's in St. John's with my father. Oh, really? She didn't want to be cremated. Really, she's right next to your father. 
Yeah, this that is was not a very nice thing to do to your he's, father. He's wanting me right now. This is the prostrate coming back. Yeah, yeah. Keep it for a while. A year and a half later, she joined them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's it's you know, it's nice. You got to visit them, I imagine. I do. Yeah, I go. I actually go at least once a week. I love my father very much. Do you know how many times I've been to his, you know how many times I've been to his grave? Um, Twice. Once when they buried him and when the second time when they buried my mother next to him. You know, come on, nobody goes out to do you, how many people well, of course you do. Go out I do. Because I, I, I go walking with are my you, sister. Are your parents we do here, Alex? What? Bay Area. Bay Area. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Coma. Et Eternal something. In coma. In coma. Yeah. 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 I don't even know which cemetery it is. It's eternal something or another. I'm sure I can find out from my business manager. He has all the information since he paid the bills for me. So anyway, you know. You know what it is? What costs more, coming into this world or leaving it? That's a. I don't know. If you go to the doctor that drew your blood, probably coming into this world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coming into this world, well, I don't... Does anybody remember being born? No. No. Probably leaving because of inflation. It, it cost about five grand for my kids. So. For, for your kids? To be born, yeah. Oh, to be born. I thought you said yeah. to be buried. And I went, five grand each? Yeah. Is, does insurance take care of that? Yeah. 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 80%. So did you shop around to find the best deal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My wife's in labor. See, their contractions are two minutes. Hold on apart. a minute. Let me Hold on, dear. I think I think I found us a better <clears throat> deal. I have to move you. That's Costco right. for twins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> better. Deal. Yeah, but Costco it, sells coffins. Well, you said eighty percent. What? Pay, who paid eighty percent? Your insurance company. I did. We oh, you did. Pay. That oh, was you my did. Co-pay. That was your copay was 80%? 80%, yeah. My kids were not cheap coming into this world. That was back me. in the 80s. It cost me about 22 grand. 22 like, grand? Wow. Because it turns out that my uh, my ex, when she was uh, working, her uh, employer decided not to pay the insurance premiums. And then we were getting divorced. And guess what? Yeah. Uh, part of the deal was I got the bill. You got the bill. And you were getting divorced when the kids were born? Yeah, when my daughter was born. Boy, that's got to be rough. You know. Yeah. Was it rough going through that? I mean, you... you oh, yeah, it was. You, I ended up living at home and working for nothing. Yeah, but but sure. forget about the cost and everything. I mean, just the fact that your wife and you were divorcing at the time the kid's getting born. Well, it was, for, it was about uh, two years later, but the bill oh. hadn't been paid yet. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, what you should have done is probably hadn't been the, uh, you probably hadn't should, been paying the uh, yeah the insurance. Well, what you should have done was just take her out to lunch and then make her pay the bill. You know, that's a, that's the <laughs> that's, only thing I could see. Right? Yeah, drop the bill in her purse quietly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be very nice. Uh, I, uh, um, you know, I I've never had kids, so I don't know how much they cost. You know. Yeah, Not neither do me. I. I'm the same thing. Right. Charlie knows, man. Uh, Wayne, have you had any kids? No. No. Okay. Are you Brian, I, how much did your daughter cost? How old are you, Wayne? Just, just well, uh, 73. 73? He doesn't you look, look it, does he? You look no. great. He does. <laughs> you got good genes. That's okay. You look pretty good for 82 or 83 also, Alan. Yeah, you look that's like right, you're yeah. about 60. Oh, yeah, sure. Come on. Ooh. Come on. So you got two compliments you got tonight. Yeah. You too. Yeah. I mean, Tony's leaving, so don't let him, don't listen to him. <laughs> hey, Tony looks old, but you look young. <laughs> oh, shit, huh? <laughs> it's the radiation. Huh? Not... Yeah, yeah, you looked old before. <laughs> the <that>. radiation. <laughs> I love the radiation. That was fun. I got a donut one time. They brought donuts in, into the office on the way out. I took, I was well, I thought you meant it was something to sit on. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> they put that on my feet. <laughs> Don't move. Really? It's just too bad you didn't have what I had, which was just the five treatments. You know. I would have got herky jerky near the galaxy for 30 minutes, though. What? I think I would have got stir crazy for a long period of time. No, no I'm, in fact, I have, uh, 
I have a claustrophobia, so you can't put me in a in a in a you know a, what do you call it a what is it not the uh, MRI. MRI. MRI MRI you can't put me in an MRA. But I, but I didn't get the claustrophobia with this thing at all, man. In fact, I made it my pal. It would it would kind of go. They kind of go around. They'd be testing like where they were going to do it and stuff. There's kind of a warm up, and then finally they said, "Okay, here we go," and this thing would come around, and the eye would kind of look at me, <laughs> and I go, "Hi, how you doing today?" I would talk to it. It was like it was my friend. Yeah. I never opened my eyes. You did. I never. I was afraid to see, to look at it. Oh, really? Oh, it's a wonderful little I red beam. Yeah, it was wonderful. It's great. Tony made other friends while he was there. He didn't. Yeah, I was talking to everybody in the thing. How you doing? The donut <laughs> delivery guy. Uh, you know. Oh, he had Jamaican guy. Oh, that Jamaican guy, Brian. He got. He had a, Alex. We had the guy. He had a pullover by the uh, Long Island Expressway on the side, and he had a pee. He couldn't hold it in anymore. We were sharing the Uber. <laughs> He said, oh, man, I'm going to go on my pants, pull over. He jumped out. He's peeing on the side of the road. I was like, oh, my God. I can feel him. Right. This guy can't hold it. You know what he did? He came with a pee bottle then. This is all I needed on the way home. I hope we didn't have to use it. Wow. So you could drop him off first. I, we were, I felt bad for the guy. He had an he had aggressive. He had an aggressive one. He was doing hormone shots, too. And oh, now Flashes, he told me. I said, I don't want to hear this. What is before. aggressive? I don't know what aggressive is. It's the Gleason squad. His Gleason squad, I think, was eight. Mine was, was seven. Six. Well, eight, to eight is more aggressive. His but but it was seven. Yeah. Only one little segment was a seven. So Yeah. What was it? A, was it a four three, Alex, or a three four? That's a big difference. It, no, it was, a, it was a four three, I think. Yeah. yeah, if the four is in front, then it's a little more gray than a three. That's than yeah, a three. But, four. but they weren't worried about it. They just wanted. No, to no, get mine it was a three four. I everything. The other that was what it yeah. was, like, it was. Like I don't know why you three. didn't do wait and watch, Tony. You're, at your age, the chances I wanted to get rid of it. Never, chances are, it would never. Be. Yeah, well, you know, know. He, but I mean, that's I, what he told me. But I want. I did what you said, Alex. And my brother said, "I said I wanted to just treat it like I told Chucky and you yeah. guys." But and your and your PSA now is it what is it non? Uh... Well, he didn't he he didn't take a PSA test yet. But I did the scan and everything. He says you know not to worry. So I'll take another thing. I think in three months I got to go to urologist. Yeah, I went to I, I went to my up to till now, and I've had about four PSA tests, uh, and they all came out no uh, detectable PSA. Yeah. yeah. So and I'm about yeah, three I'm years in. You that when you were nice enough to call me that time, remember? I remember you calling me. That was. I know, time. I know. I felt sorry for you. And I, uh, had I got you saved. I know. I got you saved in my phone, but I won't call. I know. So here's, you know, what I was going to ask you. I forgot to ask you this. When the doctor did say, like, you know, to treat it, would you have treated if I asked you? What would you have done? You would have treated it if I. I never asked you that. If you were me. If would I were you, you? I would. Yeah. I I would have done what you did. I just would have gotten. I would have gone. Gotten the stereotactic. Um, uh, version of the radiation uh, the difference yeah. folks in case you're listening and you what probably do you don't care but when you get prostate cancer you will the difference between the what they call the cyber knife or stereotactic and um, uh, and, and uh, the what 30 day or whatever I had 26 days I 26 think. days like yeah. you too. that's a lower mm. beam lower yeah uh, beam thing so what happened lower was lower energy beam lower Over energy load. beam it it's better because you don't have to spend as many days doing it. it's five days you're in you're out you know right. and it takes maybe 45 minutes a session you know that's it and and what i didn't want to have to do is if you could do the that that 25 day or whatever you gotta go mm -hmm. every day yeah i did every day i never missed one day every, yeah every I day but like i don't know how close you were to the hospital but oh, was, I was only like 15 minutes away from the uh, from the office. Yeah, well, so I, I just yeah, you know, but I long I, enough I, that you could hold your own urine, huh? Oh yeah, I had no problems. I was going, I was able to hold it really easy. Yeah, good. Yeah, but anyway, enough of prostate stuff. Yeah, enough of my stinky prostate. Pro people <laughs> people don't care about that, do they? Uh, let's see here. How many people are listening right now? Nah, they were a little, we're a little low tonight. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah. yeah. So, Where's uh, Doctor Phil tonight? He's he, he was, I was talking to him today. He's on the vitamin kick now. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, you know, if you say Phil's name too many times, he calls. I know. <laughs> and, 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 and you know, the thing we, you know what we love about Thursdays and Fridays. You know, Doctor Phil. 
Yeah, this guy's as much a doctor as I don't know who. Uh, yeah, yeah. Madison and Phil don't 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 go in the same <laughs> sentence. Yeah. So, so what anyway. are they waiting for on Trump? This, what? Um, yeah. What are they waiting for on Trump? I, don't know I think I'll, I'll tell you what. I think you want my honest opinion. What they're waiting for? I think this DA in New York said, "Screw him. I'm not going to do it Tuesday." You know, so he'll look like he's an asshole who's just blowing well, stuff out his ass. You know, they need, they have the grand jury, and the grand jury's got to uh, uh, say that we think he should be indicted, and here's the evidence. They probably yeah. will, but they probably feel exactly the same way. Yeah, probably. You know, I'm not going to do a damn thing. You know, Phil says it's a misdemeanor. No, it's not. They're, they're not going to go after him over a misdemeanor. What do they give a shit? They want to go after him for something big. Will he ever spend any time in jail in New York over it? No. But he could end up with a criminal record and a big fine. You're right about that. But I think, he, well, I, would they throw him in jail? And here's the big question. It's a good question. Let's say on any one of these charges, he loses and he gets a big jail time, some jail time, okay, a year, two years, five years, whatever, okay? And he's got to go serve it. Does the Secret Service go with him? That's yep. that's part of the problem. The, the Secret Service doesn't talk about it, but the district mm. attorney was talking the other day about it and said that you know it's never happened before. So, but he he has Secret Service protection the rest of his life, yeah. and uh, they may have to go with him every time he goes to eat, every time he goes to exercise, whatever. And they ha where are they going to house them? Put them in another cell? I have no idea. Maybe. They're going to put him in a white collar prison anyway, so he's going to get. He, he yeah, will yeah. be in a white collar prison. And everything else. Yeah. 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 They probably, you know what they should do? Just put him under house arrest. Have him have to stay at Mar a Lago with no, Melania. That would be horrible. With Melania. With Melania. <laughs> with Melania. And with your wife. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Let me to the chair. Maybe we will block off a little area for Marjorie Taylor Green to Melania. stay there, too. They'll just yeah. take each other out. Now, here's the thing the DA here in, in New York, you know, the uh, 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 Jim, Jim Jordan and uh, his cronies there and the Republican Party have subpoenaed, or I guess they subpoenaed, the district attorney of New yeah, York to appear before them. And today, <laughs> today, the district attorney sent them a letter. It's a five-page, six-page letter, big letter, saying, basically, screw you. Number one, this is a legal matter of a state nature and of a city nature and not of a federal nature. Yeah. And secondly, the only reason you want me to do this is to get some, you know, help for Donald Trump, you know? Like You're not doing this because you really want to find out what's going on. So I refuse to show up because you have no right to ask me. And, and also, whatever is the evidence that you want me, they want him to bring the evidence they have against Trump. And he said, I can't do that. That's confidential information that can only be made known when he is officially charged and I'm sorry, you can't have that. You can't have privy to that information. And it's a state matter. It has nothing to do with the federal right. government. You have no jurisdiction over it. A, a typical Republicans overstepping their bounds again. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kind of. Grand jury is secret for a reason. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. And I'm wondering what's going to happen with all these other charges. You know, are they finally going to do something about it? I think it's getting to the point where I think those it's going to embolden those other people to, to move forward, you know. So, you know, but I think he is going to get charged here in New York. I don't think there's any question about that. There, also, the reason the district attorney didn't want to see the indictment happen right now is that he wanted some time to pass so they could figure out how they're going to get him in and out of New York without ha having, having a minimum of trouble, okay? Uh, Apparently, the judge is the race, and he won't let him do it video. He's got to show up in person, just like anybody else. Yeah, well, you know, if if you if you if you they go by and they say you're under arrest, I mean, they could arrest him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they could. could. What they what they normally do in a case like this is they, you know, if they indict him, they 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 warn the uh, his defense attorneys, and they say we want him here a week from Monday. 
And uh, if he doesn't show up, they send the FBI out hunting for him. Well, this wouldn't be the FBI. This would have to be some kind of New York constabulary. Yeah, um, it would be a state. Be, um, yeah, because it's a state thing. Law. It's yeah, not a right, federal this, thing. This is a state. Yeah, okay, well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But, well, but here's the thing. If they want to go down, let's say he doesn't want to leave Mar-a-Lago. Let's say he is, I'm not going to allow you to, you know, indict me and so on, whatever. Then the state of New York has to ask the governor of Florida for extradition of this individual. Yep. What will DeSantis do? <laughs> it's probably gone through his mind, too. Let's see. Do I say, do I say yes? Or do I say no? Yeah. So I mean, that's good. that would be interesting if it comes to that, you know. But uh, you I, take a Cancun vacation like uh, what's his name? Did. Yeah, well, Cruise, actually, yeah. what they're saying, Ted what they say, what what they're saying is, is Get that a week. <laughs> that the uh, the whole thing is, you know, he, is that uh, Trump wants to be arrested. I mean, he wants to have to go to New York and turn himself in or whatever because he's got a film crew ready to go with him to cover the whole thing. And he, he's, hoping, he's hoping for handcuffs, which was the same thing he did. It's interesting. He's hoping for handcuffs, which is the same thing he hoped for with Stormy Daniels. So, you know, I mean. He's, they're not going to get to film much. He's going to be snuck into the courthouse as... as easily as the Secret Service can do it. He'll go right there under armed guard in the courthouse with the Secret Service to the courtroom. Yeah, but that's he'll not fair. That's not fair. Be, and then he'll be able to post bail, which will be zero, and they'll release him and he can go back home. That's not fair. It's not fair because if it I were arrested fair. for the same thing, they would do the perp walk with me. Yep, absolutely. You know, he they, wants the perp walk. He thinks it's going to help him. You know, it, it, it always, always is amazing. Imagine me being arrested, right? They will, they will fingerprint him, but, though. Right, oh, but yeah. they, but they arrest. Let's say they arrest me. Your mugshot. They always put mug hand, shot they, they always put handcuffs on the people. Can you imagine? I mean, why are you putting handcuffs on me? Am I? It's like I'm going to bolt. You know, it's like I'm going to jump somebody at my age. No. I mean, they always have people wear the handcuffs because it looks demeaning. And that goes to prison. Is it is his hairstylist going to go with him? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the one that does the swirly thing and the flare thingy. He's going to have to do it himself, and that's going to be hilarious to look at. <laughs> Can't they just shave him? <laughs> I wonder if... Hey. Shave, shave him, shave his head, and then he doesn't have to go to prison. If, if, <laughs> if, if, but let me ask you a question: If he does the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, uh, his little you know social media stuff, will he be able to do it from prison? Will they allow that? I don't think so. Huh? Yeah. They aren't allowed to have cell phones, are they, in prison? No. No. Somebody just wrote, uh, hoping on handcuff for handcuffs, hoping for handcuffs. I love the attention, but I was hoping for handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful handcuffs. Yeah. Oh, boy. I mean, it, yeah, what a world we live in, huh? It's finally come to that. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know what? You're still living, Alex, and that's the thing. I remember when the whole thing was going through, and you're just saying, I just want to live to see him lose, you know? So, <laughs> you know, you pass that. That's good. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I mean, um, I, now I want to live. Let's see. What do I want to live long enough to see now? I, I really want to live long enough to see us get up back to the moon. I really want to see that. Once that's happened, okay, take me. I'm yours. You know, but before then, I'd like to survive. But, you know, every day I fall out and go to sleep at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Why is that? At, at the rate we're going, you'll be 100 by the time you get to Probably. Probably. Anyway, hey, they, with the massive uh, jolt of theme there, uh, it's been nice tonight, you know. Uh, it's been really a pleasant, pleasant experience with all of you. Kevin, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, uh, Brian, I love having you here all the time, as well as you, uh, Alan. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's give Jeff a big round of applause. There we go. And uh, let's uh, just snub Tony totally. Uh, and uh, but thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you to Wayne. Wayne, good having you here. 
Uh, he's got the best mic in the house and says he's the least of anybody. And I, and I don't say anything, yeah. <laughs> but that's fine with us. We just love having you here. And, 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 uh, and of course, uh, Charlie Wallace. Uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And we'll say goodbye. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we'll uh, we'll do the whole thing again tomorrow. But in the meantime, up next is Jack Bishop. He's got the intersection, and he'll take your calls at on Skype at GabNet Live. GabNet Live. Meanwhile, we're going to take uh, 22 hours off, and then we'll be right back here tomorrow. Well, 22 and a half hours off. But we'll be back here. Tomorrow at 10.30 Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.